welcome to part two of FS Mania series on Flight One's Ultimate King Air B200. If you are just now joining us, we are currently at Cold Bay, Alaska, and we are taxiing for departure to runway 33. We've done our cold and dark startup. You can check that out in part one. And we're getting ready to do a run up and take off for departure. So climb aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the flight. And I see the wind sock showing wind pretty much straight down the runway. And we'll just check, make sure nothing's coming. Nothing's coming. Cold Bay traffic, King Air 520, Yankee Kilo. We're back taxi and runway 33 for departure, Cold Bay. six and eight. Nothing coming. Nothing coming. Here's our run-up area. There's the moon. Have some low clouds over here covering these mountains. set right here where we can keep an eye on the approach into the runway set our brake brake set so there's a few things we want to do before we take off the run up part we're going to just be sure we got our props down here roughly in the, the beta range and the idle range and once again we'll check our instruments let's look at the wet compass up there it looks like about degrees or so yep that looks good and that looks good right there and could get rid of this right here I hit the flight plan button down here if I can see it I think it's that one hit it again there it is okay and we've cross-checked these altimeters we'll do it again 100 100 100 heading bug is set to runway heading altitude is set to 1000 and we're going to do a check on our pressurization system and what we want to do is open up our bleed air valves over here two notches up get those on the warning lights are now off and let's get down here where we can see this and what we're going to do is bring the controller and put us in a descent and we're going to keep an eye right here and we're going to bring it into the test mode and see that we are in a descent so we can bring it out of the test mode and now set it up to our cruise altitude which is the inner dial here of 230 so right along there pretty much there about 5,000 feet cabin altitude that looks good we can check our autopilot and right now we've got no indications. So when we cut on the autopilot right here, I can see roll, autopilot, y'all damper pitch, out select, all on. And when we cut that off, we get the warning, loud warning. And I see roll and pitch. And then I want to come here and press the go around switch. And I can see that we're in takeoff mode, takeoff mode, and flight directors indicating eight degrees pitch nose up so that's ready to go trim tabs we'll set those to zero right here elevator and the aileron tabs are zero rudders zero 
all that's good and flaps will go ahead and set that the controllers here there's two positions you can see them here and there's the first position which is 40 not degrees percent down and full flaps is the second position and there are a lot of flaps so have to remember to also it causes it to porpoise up so we want to definitely counteract those so we're looking at the ailerons making sure they're correct and we've got full range of movement on, on all of that looks good so now we're going to do a, a rudder boost test and here's our rudder boost switch right here so the rudder boost on this plane along with the auto feather are designed to help the pilot in the event of a uh, worst case scenario engine out on takeoff or engine out anytime for that matter by uh, automatically feathering the props and also adding uh, rudder to overcome the adverse yaw when um, asymmetrical thrust from a dead engine. So we're going to test that and what we'll do is prop controls are full forward. We're going to take the test switch which is right here and we'll hold that in the test position. Now I'm going to bring up the left engine up to looking at the RPMs up here. We want to bring it up to about 1830 which is about the top of the W maybe just a little higher right here We're right in there we'll just let that come up and you can see already the rudders are moving and in fact they're actually moving in the wrong direction because this is simulating that the right engine's out so that's the dead engine we would actually be putting left rudder in right now if this were the case because the airplane would be yawing to the right so this rudder would be the one that's depressed. There's 1850. I'm sorry, that's uh, the, the torque here's 1787. Let's bring this on up just a little bit more. And you can see the right rudder's going in as we increase the power. And that is really not what we want. It's kind of reverse. It's actually going to hurry us up to the scene of the accident in that uh, configuration but we'll call it that it's working and we'll take our switch out of the test mode and then bring it back in the test mode and check our right engine so we'll bring that up and you can see the left rudder pedal is going in we would actually in this situation be using right rudder dead foot dead engine so we wouldn't be pushing in on left rudder because the left engine's dead but at any rate it is animated it does move and there's 18 something eight between 1830 and 1910 I think and then as we add we can see that it's moving so we'll bring those on back down and now I want to bring them back up 1800 and again just a little bit above, above the W will get us about there the ice vanes extended may just to be a tad more you can see the uh, synchoscope here it's pointing to the engine that needs to be reduced in other words the one that's higher help us get these synced up In other words, we would need to pull the power back on this one. But I'm trying to get it up right, right around 1800. So just add a little bit more in here. There's 18 on the left. And I want to exercise the prop governor pretty close there to 18. I want to exercise the prop governors. We'll bring them back. As the caution light comes on, let us know we're not ready for reverse thrust. And then we'll come over here while we're in this mode and we want to check be sure we've got suction and pneumatic pressure we do if we cut the bleeds off we get a caution light and you can see that the gauges come down to zero back on gauges come back up all that looks good and then while we're up at this rpm I'm going to watch the torque and retract the ice veins see the torque rises 
caution light goes or the light goes out and extended torque drops so that the right one's working left one rising torque light goes out and light back on so all that's good now I'm going to bring the power levers back to about 500 foot pounds and we'll check out the auto feather so we'll just move the power lever slow take some there's a little bit of a lag we can ditch the caution light here bring them back up just a little bit I need at least 500 foot-pounds Okay, so for the auto feather test, what I'm going to do is come in here and actually come down here and you can see the two lights came on. So I'm going to bring the left power lever back and the right light should come out once we get below about 400 foot pounds of thrust. There it is, and now when I bring the right one back, the left light should go out when we get down below about 400 pounds. like 300 uh, yeah below 400 so there it is those two work and let me refer back to my checklist yeah we were there we did that ice veins auto feather power levers retard and let's arm now the auto feather and that's armed okay fuel quantity looks good auxiliary tanks indicating empty mains we've got 1300 pounds in each tank and I want to do one thing up here um, right here let's come in here and check our V speed so for takeoff we want to put these actually in the on position so let's see if I can get this to come down here the other way there we go so V ref actually I want that off that's for landing and VR we want this one to be on 96 knots and then our our V uh, come on down there and on there we go and we want this one to be on oh it is on okay so this one it looks like VSO which is <coughs> normally stall speed but I think this is 121 knots is the single engine uh, safe single engine climb speed in this aircraft so that's what we're going to shoot for when we take off so let's come back up here then and then we'll start that timer and let me do a quick takeoff briefing <clears throat> this will be a left seat IFR departure from runway 33 takeoff power will be set at 1900 pounds foot pounds of torque flaps are set to approach so VR is 96 knots and VYSE is 121 knots. Any malfunctions affecting the safety of this flight at or below 96 knots, we will re reject the takeoff. Above 96 knots, we will continue. If it is an engine failure, we'll identify the affected engine via the dead foot and verify with the engine gauges. Then feather the prop, which should already be feathered with the auto feather and we will climb to maintain safe altitude of maneuvering altitude of 2,000 feet and we will run through a checklist and then return to Cold Bay on ILS on runway 15 using the ILS if necessary. So that is our takeoff briefing and final checks. Bleed air valves are open. Transponder, still, still squawking ground, ice protection. We're going to go ahead and set in course our pedo and our stall warning and we'll get our fuel vents in we're going to cut everything on that we can down here that doesn't require too much power prop heat and windshield up in the normal position so we'll get all of that out on and then if we get into some icing then we'll just pop the boots down here we've already got the ice veins on so that's good and we're going to arm the while we're in here we'll arm the auto ignition and let's check the annunciator lights we're showing the ignition and anti-ice is on 
and we'll come in with our strobes here and get our landing lights on and we are ready to get out here on this runway release the brake Kobe traffic King Air Zero Yankee Kilo will be departing runway 33 straight out departure Kobe ourselves lined up we're going to do a standing takeoff the guy accidentally just hit my prop lever and that's what that caution light's telling me <clears throat> sometimes I just bump it yeah that's what that was <clears throat> so what we're doing now since we've got our auto feather armed we're going to bring our our props up We're going to bring our power lever up until we see the ignition lights go out. Then we're going to continue on up until we see the auto feather lights come on. That'll tell us that we have our power uh, set for takeoff. We're looking for a close to 2,000 RPMs on our prop. Bringing them up gradual. Waiting on the light. There's the light and just a tad bit more and I'm looking at the RPMs are 1910 we'll call that good I'm gonna go ahead and start our timer release the brakes airspeed's alive gauge is all in the green 60 knots Positive rate, gear up. And there's 120 knots. Go ahead and get the flaps in. Looking for 400 feet. There's 400 feet. Autopilot on. Go into the nav mode. Vertical speed once, vertical speed twice and about 1,800 feet on the climb speed. And we'll bring our props back now to 1,700 RPMs. I'm sorry, 1,800. for cruise. Climbing out right now at 170. In the clouds. In the turn. And that's 1800 there. I'll recheck that in just a second. I'll zoom this out to 20 miles. Meant to do that before we left the ground. There we go. We're in the turn and prop RPMs look good. Power, we're looking about for about 1,900 foot-pounds, so we'll bring that up just a little bit. And between 91.3 and 91.8 in the climb, and we can get our landing lights off, and taxi lights off. Props are synced. We'll go ahead and go on with prop sync. And let's come up here and take auto feather off. Auto feather off. And we can take the engine ignition off and then we'll do our checklist. 
It's still pretty dark here. We'll be coming out of these clouds here momentarily. I'm seeing some sun coming up over here. Interestingly, we've got one big major step, and the only thing that I can see that it has affected, and this is sort of kind of crazy, is the, uh, I'm going to close this, the avionics master. I did not cut that home. I can see my clock's not operating. So there's avionics master. I now have a clock. I don't think it affected any other instrument on here. That's pretty weird. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and call center. Let's get that done while we're climbing out here. I've got them in here on COM2. So, there's COM2. Anchorage Center, King Air 520, Yankee Kilo, climbing out of Cold Bay through 5.7 for 1-1000. Up to 230 for 0 Yankee Kilo. Alrighty, so we got all the way up there. So this is where we would really be careful not to mess up. And I see I just did that. Just right there. Be sure we're in the vertical speed mode. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and increase that up to, I'm going to leave it at 1800. Still about 170 knots, and let's check right here, 91.1. We'll leave that in here until we get this set. So, yeah, this is really touchy. You have to watch yourself. More than once, I've messed up a good flight by accidentally clicking something up there that I didn't mean to. So we're at 230, 90.9 on the uh, turbine right now, the N1. So I'm going to just ease that up just a little bit, keep us up, up above the 91.3, below 91.8. And that should keep our torque, our ITT is well below red line. Torque's below red line. There's 91.5. Beautiful day to fly to Anchorage. So long, Cold Bay. We'll go ahead and cut that light off back there. Let those guys chill out. There it is. Okay. And since we're above the clouds now, we'll go ahead and cut these ice veins off as well. And that's going to give us a little bit of increase in torque. Let's just be sure we don't exceed. We're still at 91.1 here, so we can increase that just a little bit. Now you can see our torques up closer to the red line with the ice veins retracted. There's 91.5, that looks good. Autopilot's on, y'all dampers on, heading mode, we're in vertical, we're in nav mode. Tracking outbound from the VOR toward King Salmon. And vertical speed is set at 1800 feet per minute. Our ground speed right now is 187 knots in the climb. Climb power set, and we're at 18, a little bit more, can reduce that just a tiny bit, not increase, but reduce, trying to get it right around 1800, won't be dead on it, but pretty close, prop sync is on, auto feathers off, and any ice veins, and we can go ahead and shut off some of this other anti-ice. So you can see we got prop amps on, so we know we got our prop heat on, so we'll take that off. We can get rid of the stall warning. 
and pitot heat we leave that on fuel vents off and we'll leave the windshield heat on and you know I didn't cut on the floods tail floods I should have on departure uh, taxi lights off recognition actually looks we'll cut those floods on now since it's still wee hours in the morning although the sun's coming up pretty fast we use the nap lights too so that's all good there there's the sun hello mr. sun interesting here in Alaska the sun comes up we're heading 030 so it's coming up pretty extreme northeast and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom us out I got a little criticism from a big deal but saying go ahead go ahead go ahead I say that I guess a lot also I say and a lot it's me thinking out loud pretty much saying whatever pops in my little mind so we're zoomed out right now 300 nautical miles and here's the Aleutian Islands there we have Bering Sea off to our left and Gulf of Alaska off to our right and the Aleutian Islands right there and checking on our power as we're in the climb go ahead and increase it just a little bit more coming now through 14.5 Above 10,000 feet, we can't go ahead and get these recognition lights off up here. We've gone through 10,000, and if we wanted to, we could let our passengers actually go ahead and move about the cabin. Since it's fairly smooth air right now. And then the last thing we'll want to check is, not the last, but one of the last is going to be altimeter will go to the standard 29992 once we get above 18,000. So that's pretty much the departure procedure. So the only thing I think that I snap food on was not bringing that avionics power switch on but you know I gotta say it seems like that it really should be blatantly obvious that it's not on and the only thing I really see that it affected was the chrono chronometer here this this clock over here on this yoke it's indicating what it should so it's almost of course a little bit before 5 a.m. and um, we should be in Anchorage before 7 easily all things go well and there's our 18,000 feet so we'll go ahead and go to the standard on the barometers we'll cross check 18.3 and 18.4 so we're good there and we're on our way so what we have left to do is just come to cruise once we get up here and we're going to keep an eye on our temperatures and looking down here right now, we're minus nine Fahrenheit. Uh, over here, we can actually read Celsius if we want to. So Celsius, we're minus, what, 30-ish, uh, uh, 20, 22 Celsius. Uh, minus 11, it's getting a little colder as we climb. We're gonna increase our power here just a little bit. Climbing through flight level two zero zero ninety one point four and one looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and slow up our climb just a little bit. That'll start accelerating us, and then we won't have such a dramatic nose down once we reach our signed altitude. Should be getting a thousand to go here at about 500 feet. So we're climbing now at a thousand feet per minute. 
speed right now is 215 knots and uh, true airspeed is 250 knots and it'll climb as we're accelerating now. We're starting to level off here. No caution lights, no caution lights. Altitude hold mode is on GPS, y'all damper. There's the level off. Airspeed's coming up. Everything's looking good there. And our temperature minus 25 at flight level 230, the international standard atmosphere. We are within one degree Fahrenheit of that. So I've got a chart of cruise settings I want to take a look at. So we can set the cruise. And this is for 1700 RPMs. We want um, about 2230 on our torque, and we should be burning about 370 pounds of fuel per hour per engine. So we're a little bit below that right now on the torque, but I'm going to go ahead and start bringing our props back to the 1700. We'll hear the pitch change. They'll quieten up a little bit. There's pretty close to it. Our synchoscope showing the props are still synced well. And now we want to bring this torque up to as close to 2,200 pounds as we can get it. 2,230. We won't be dead on it, but we'll get try to get up there a little bit closer. Just nudge it up just a little bit. Oh, our lights just dimmed on us and that happens at this time of day as the sun rises 5 a.m. it's an FSX program that that happens and so that's when I bring these dome lights on so I can see the panel so at night time you can actually see the panel better I thought I think I can but anyway back to setting their cruise power 2180 Try to keep it below the 2230. And we went above it, so we'll come back. Yeah, otherwise you see what happens. Ease it back. Better to be slightly below. There's 2230. We may have to live with 2200 because I've only got so much play in this for fine tuning. That's 91.6. Ground speed right now is 271. True airspeed, 304 knots. We do have a headwind, 27 knots, as forecast. So we're going to call that good. And let me just double check the checklist to be sure that we have not forgot anything. We've set our cruise. Fuel flow, 370 pounds as predicted by the chart. Engine instruments, we will monitor those. And now, make sure we don't have any ice, we don't. Now we can just kick back and enjoy the ride. This would be a good time to get a cup of coffee. 5 a.m., well on our way. And we have a pretty good ways to go. So we will do this. I'm going to share maybe a couple of quick fun facts about Anchorage. We'll break the video and we'll pick it back up in the um, arrival phase. We'll prepare for the descent and the arrival, do a few more fun facts and land in Anchorage when we come back. 
but um, factoids, fun facts, and well, maybe some of them aren't so fun, but one of them that is fun is that Anchorage has been named the most tax-friendly city in the United States. So, if you don't like paying taxes, Anchorage is a good place to live. I don't know who gave them that designation, but that is one of their claims to fame. Um, a factoid, in uh, March of 1964, a magnitude 9.2 earthquake hit Anchorage. It's called the Good Friday Earthquake. Killed 115 people and caused $311 million worth of damage. And that was uh, be 2.36 billion today, and uh, with today's U.S. dollars. And the event lasted. The earth-shaking event lasted nearly five minutes, and it was the second largest earthquake in recorded history. It destroyed a lot of the buildings in Anchorage, and they spent most of the 1960s rebuilding. So a couple of quick fun facts about Anchorage. We'll have more and some about the King Air and some crashes, uh, infamous crashes, uh, King Air crashes, and other things about uh, Anchorage and prepare for the descent arrival um, into Anchorage. So for now, I'm going to break the video here. I will say thanks for watching and being with me on this flight. And until the next one, so long from FS Mania. Heavy turn left heading 230.